Hello everyone, I'm your host Multi Apples, and welcome back to episode 2 of a Fruitful Wrestling Podcast. In today's episode, I interviewed Dr. Chris Featherstone about his experience of hosting a wrestling podcast and being a wrestling fan and being a journalist in the professional wrestling industry. I recorded this interview two days ago, and I hope you all enjoy it. All right, so I am recording now, and I'd like to introduce my guest, uh, Dr. Chris Featherstone. Uh, he has a PhD in forensic psychology. He has a passion for pro wrestling, which we'll tap into in his experience and his passion today. And he is a sports journalist, uh, mainly for professional wrestling. Uh, he's made a variety of contributions to publications like The Bleacher Report, Fox Sports, Fan Buzz, Digital Spy, uh, Sports Illustrated, Professional Wrestling Illustrated, and Sports Theater. And he hosts, uh, personally, my favorite podcast, the, pa- the Pancakes of Power Slams podcast. And he's had over 100 uh, guests, uh, ma- mainly professional wrestlers from on the interview show. So thank you for coming on to the show, Dr. Chris. Okay. My pleasure. Uh, can you tell us a little bit Can you tell us about a a little bit about yourself and what got you into professional wrestling? Absolutely. So uh, my late great grandma, she passed when I was uh, approaching uh, high school. Um, I was in eighth grade, I believe, going into the ninth grade. And she loved pro wrestling. She was a huge pro wrestling fan. And, uh, you know, it's it's still incredible to the day to, to, to talk about a, you know, at that time, as I was growing up, she was in her sixties. So a 60 year old, you know, uh, a 60 year old woman in a reclining chair and a cane, uh, just thinking kayfabe is real. And just the, the biggest pro wrestling fan I've ever seen in my whole life. She thought it was real. She loved it. She was a diehard pro wrestling fan. And uh, my brother's a year younger than me, and him and I would just sit there and just watch in front of her. We had a, a floor model television, as well. so we would sit right in front of her. She would sit right behind us, uh, probably five feet or so, four or five feet away uh, behind us with her cane, and she would just yell at the TV. She hated the, the villains. She loved the good guys. And, you know, to this day, you know, it was 35 years ago, uh, just about. And to this day, uh, I, you know, made some really good money uh, writing and talking about wrestling. And I still love the good guys and hate the bad guys. And so, uh, you know, she, because of that, because of her passion for wrestling, I, I started watching wrestling. She got me into watching wrestling. I, I didn't stop, never stopped. Uh, she passed away when I was going into high school. And in honor of her, I uh, maintain watching wrestling and I never stopped. In nearly about 35 years, I've never stopped watching pro wrestling. I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, oh, no, no worries. Uh, who are some of her favorite wrestlers or favorite pro wrestlers? Uh, she was a big, uh, as far as I remember, she, she, uh, she liked Hogan from what I remember. Um, just all the baby faces that were the, or the good guys that's wrestling talk for good guys. That was around in the 80s, which, uh, you know, Dusty Rhodes, um, Randy Savage, you know, he had good days, you know, good guy times and bad guy times. Hulk Hogan was really big in the 80s. Bruno San Martino was real big in the 80s. So whoever, you know, good guy wrestler was, you know, real big around those times. She was a, she was a big fan of. Uh, how do you get started in uh, the media such as Wrestling Inc. and Pro Wrestling Illustrated and Sports Kita? Yeah, absolutely. So I, uh, I just am an entrepreneur. I just have an entrepreneurial mindset. And uh, I was like, you know what, I, I have a, I'm a big fan of just making money for things I'm passionate to do, you know, for if I do it for free, I just might as well just make my make my time profitable and just make money doing it. So I watch wrestling for free. And <laughs> so I was like, you know what, uh, let me just use this time and make money out of this time. So I started off with what uh, with writing for a, a publication called. It was just a uh, just a site where a bunch of articles. It wasn't even edited. It was called Hub Pages. It was just a really big site for just a bunch of 
articles just to be sent and written and just published. And so I actually used that. It was just a, you know, I didn't get paid a dime for it. And I said, you know what, I got to get in the door somehow. So I was trying to figure out how I'm going to get in the door. And I saw, I saw the, you know, the hub pages opportunity allowed me to start writing for free. And so I started writing a post raw show uh, article every single week called yes, no, maybe. And so I would watch raw and I would uh, write about the good things I like, write, write about the things I didn't like and write about the things that kind of had some opportunity in future weeks. And so I built up a, a portfolio writing yes, no, maybe articles and actually used that and sent it over to the Bleach Report, which was my first big opportunity. And so they liked my articles that I wrote on Hub Pages. I uh, started off as an analyst. Within a few weeks, they liked my work and the, the traction I was getting. Uh, that ended up having me become a, a feature columnist within the first few weeks of me being there. And I was a feature columnist there for over three years. When was that? Uh, that was in 2012, I believe it was. Wow. Yeah. So you've been doing this for quite a while. Yeah, about a decade that's, now. Yeah. That's impressive. Thanks. That's cool. yeah. uh, why do you think professional wrestling is so popular as big as it is here in the States? Um, I, I think it's that I always call it, always call it a, a pro wrestling, a comic book come to life. It, it's the, it's the cosplay. It's the comic book. It's the, you know, it, it has a little bit of anime in it. It has a, it has a little bit of everything in it. It's just a really, uh, it's a, an opportunity for, uh, it has a bit of soap opera in it too. It's just, it has a sports element in it. It's entertainment. It's just a compilation of a whole lot of things. And especially in this COVID season, I think with a lot of people, uh, with a lot of sports being shut down during the COVID season, pro wrestling was the only thing for a while that was still active and in, in producing live shows. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they shut down the March Madness. I'm a huge college basketball fan. They shut that down in March. Um, they shut uh, down the basketball season for a while, then uh, didn't, didn't wait, waited for a long time before they started back up. Uh, they shut down baseball for a while. They, you know, they cut about half the season for baseball. And so a lot of, I mean, pro wrestling was really the only live product still going week to week. And so uh, people, you know, wanted to see something. And so uh, that's popular. And I think, you know, just the residual effect of all the, uh, heroes of yesteryear, all the Hulk Hogan's, all the, you know, Randy Savages and things like that. I think people still like that old school element. Uh, there's a lot of transition that we see with pro wrestling, but a lot of people still like that old school element of the, the, the good guys come to save the day. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree. Uh, how did you manage to get all these uh, famous wrestlers on your, on your podcast? Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> just, again, building up a portfolio. Uh, when I started Pancakes and Power Slams in uh, 2012, it was actually the uh, the post, the Tuesday following WrestleMania in 2012. I said, you know what? It's, uh, it's something new. I don't, I don't know anything about the podcast business. I'm going to endeavor in the podcast business and just, you know, start. I don't, I don't know where to start, but I'm going to find out just like... Uh, uh, let me get my uh, screen. My videos went out. Um, there we go. Uh, so yeah, it, it 2012. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm just gonna start. And so I started building up. You know, I, I still I, I listened to my 2012 shows, and I'm like, man, these things are just cringeworthy. Uh, but I had to start somewhere. And uh, my 50th show, I think it was, uh, it was within my 50th show. My my first. Uh, guest was a friend of mine who's a, a really big independent wrestler here uh, locally his name's onyx uh his, his name's sean but he goes by onyx and so uh he he offered to do do it and uh he was my first guest uh my second guest i believe my 50th episode i had elijah burke i believe wow. uh was my was my first guest either elijah burke or um i think it was elijah burke was my first guest and then I had um, uh, uh, Tyler Rex and Crimson from, uh, you know, he, he was real big in TNA, Impact Wrestling. And those were like my first three 
uh, guests, my first four guests, um, count, counting Onyx. And so that was like, and so I used that to, to build a resume and end up having guest after guest after guest. And the Bleach Re- writing for Bleach Report as a feature columnist helped too, because podcasts, especially nowadays, are a dime a dozen. So a lot of people are like, you know what? I don't want to be on your podcast because I don't know who you are. There's so many podcasts going on now. I don't even know, you know, what your product's about. But I was building a resume, writing for Bleach Report, and also gaining some popularity by having guests on there. And then that turned into um, having more guests. And now I've I've interviewed about 250 wrestlers. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I have an interview. I have an interview every week. Um, I actually switched my interview section of Pancakes and Power Slams. My, my podcast became so popular that it's been featured in many places um, all over the wrestling world. And Sports Kita actually... Uh, asked me to use my interview section and it actually became a spinoff and it's now it's its own show called unscripted and so pancakes and power slams became so popular that it became a that pa- part of it became a spinoff so uh it's been very successful the past um, almost it'll be nine years in, in april nice i i know that when i was uh looking at pro wrestling podcasts the very first suggestion that was made was the pancakes and power slams podcast. Wow, that's, a, that's and awesome. That's uh, I've listened to a wide variety of podcasts over a wide variety of, of topics, and I I'll admit that your podcast is very unique. It's special. You actually interact with the fans, and that's what one thing I personally like about the podcast. And that's one thing I uh, I think many people like about your podcast. So. Yeah, I make that um, uh, one of the top priorities of my show um, because I always think of it like, hey, look, I don't, I just don't really, you know, it's kind of like just the personality I am. I like to be interactive. And if I'm just listening to someone just, uh, especially via video at, you know, 11 o'clock at night, 1130 at night when, <laughs> when I have my uh, podcast, it's like, okay, well, you're, they're just not. You know, it just doesn't make sense to me to just talk for an hour, hour and a half with zero interaction. It just seems boring to me. You know what I mean? Like, uh, just as a as as a user, if I'm thinking f- from the mind of the consumer, again, I'm I'm a business guy. I'm an entrepreneur. If I'm thinking from the mind of a, of a consumer, if I'm listening to a podcast, like I like listening to podcasts, theology and apologetics podcasts particularly, but I do that when I'm doing cardio at the gym, you know what I mean? Like when I'm doing cardio at the gym or if I'm studying, you know what I mean? Like that doesn't require interaction, but the podcast that I do, it requires interaction. You know, otherwise I'm just sitting there talking about wrestling for an hour or two. And that to me, I wouldn't be interested in that. You know what I mean? So I want to produce something that I would be interested in. I would be interested in having interaction with the fans and with the host. And so that's what I produce instead of just talk about wrestling for two hours. That seems boring to me. That's a very good uh, mindset. Uh, so uh, how often do you, uh, before COVID, how often do you go to pro- professional wrestling events? And what's uh, your favorite wrestler that you met, whether it be interviewed or just at an event or whatever? Sure, sure. So um i go to every single uh live uh show that comes here i'm columbus ohio native born and bred and uh every every show over the past 20 years that's live i uh, i i think i have a streak of uh, i haven't missed a live show since like 1999 i think oh. yeah so i go to every single live show that's here um televised show Sometimes, you know, sometimes I miss the house shows on purpose. I don't really care about those, but every single televised show I go to. Um, and then I go to um, uh, a few shows outside of Ohio, uh, outside of Columbus. Uh, I'm a good friends with Bobby Fulton, the legendary pro wrestler, and, uh, pro wrestler Bobby Fulton. And so he actually has shows uh, statewide. Uh, he's a Chillicothe guy. It's about uh, an hour, 45 minutes to an hour away from Columbus. And so uh, he has shows in different spots of Ohio. 
So if it's within an hour and a half or so, I'll just, I'll hike over there and just support him and just uh, go to his shows. He usually has a few big legends every time. Um, as far as uh, people I've met, um, the most person I've met as far as talking wise was, uh, well, the biggest person I met to me talking wise was Ricky Steamboat. He's my uh, third best wrestler of all time. And so I was able to meet and talk with him actually a uh, really cool dude. Uh, my favorite of all time is staying. And I was actually a part of, uh, I did some media a few, I do media for WrestleMania every year. I go there. I did media a few years ago it was a Q and a session with sting and Ric Flair and Jim Ross. And I was a part, I was able to be a part of that. It wasn't uh, a, a personal, you know, interaction with sting, but I was able to be a part of that uh, part of that event. So that was the biggest, those are the biggest two. Um, I think right now I'm at, 12 or 13 WWE Hall of Famers that I've interviewed. Wow. Um, so I've interviewed uh, Goldberg, DDP, uh, Booker T, Teddy Long, Bushwhacker Luke. I'm trying to think of all the Hall of Famers. I uh, interviewed Ricky Steamboat m- multiple times. Um, yeah, I think I've counted 12. I don't, I, I'm sure I've missed a bunch, but uh, I've counted 12. I think I'm at tw- 12 or 13 now. That's cool. So, yeah. You met some uh, legends in the business. Uh, yeah. A lot of legends, actually. Yep. Uh, I guess this is uh, last two questions. Uh, what's your all-time favorite uh, wrestling match? And what advice would you give to people who are looking to start uh, doing their own podcast, whether it be wrestling or whether it be something else? Yes, yes. Really, really good. Two questions. So my favorite match of all time, I would say is uh, Sting versus Ric Flair, Great American Bash 1990. Uh, That was Sting's first uh, NWA World Heavyweight Championship win. So uh, it was a really good build up. Uh, He actually got real hurt uh, in this cage match when they had the whole Robocop thing beforehand. They changed it uh, to Wrestle War. He actually, the, the, the Four Horsemen, they he was a part of the four horsemen for a little bit they turned on him a class of champions in january of that year uh then they did the robocop thing and um he got injured and they replaced russell Bohr with lex luger ended up coming back for great american bash uh time and he ended up winning the title so uh 1990 i was i marked out um I went crazy when Sting won the title. So that was my, that's my all time favorite match. Uh, as far as podcasting, um, you know, especially in 2020, you know, <laughs> podcasts come a dime a dozen. So I would say prepare, 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 prepare. Um, understand, wa- watch other podcasts, watch, I would say, watch a lot of podcasts, understand where your niche is, stay in that niche. Uh, know what your lane is stay in your lane don't be like every other podcast you have to think above you have to think like a businessman you have to think above and beyond what is it about you that someone's going to be interested in you know what is it about you um you know always i always try to go ahead of the curve when it comes to me and podcasting because i know that there's so many podcasts out there why in the world would someone want to be interested in mind in mind if there's so many different podcasts out there? And so that's the reason why I really uh, started doing video casting, you know, as far as like the, the video Q and a interaction, instead of doing just the regular podcasting audio, then I start doing that. Then I start doing fun, different stuff. Then I start doing hashtag ax Chris. That's a big yeah. thing. Now I'm a doctor now. So it's hashtag ax Dr. Chris. Uh, so, and, and I started doing the, uh, about four years ago, four and a half years ago, I started doing the weekly interviews. Like when I started having a, a wrestler come in every single week. Um, and that was a big thing. So anything that just really allows you to stick out, you know, the, why am I going to watch pancakes and power Sam's? Cause I know that a new wrestler is going to be on because I know I got, oh, I got something to say about what just happened last week. And I know that Pancakes and Power Slams are, is going to give me one of the best opportunities to share what I think and let people know too, instead of just having some chat room conversations and the host not, you know, at not recognizing or ignoring it. Pancakes and Power Slams is going to give you one of the best opportunities to actually have your thoughts 
be recognized and be broadcasted. So uh, be, be, be broadcast. So that's a few things that really sticks out in my show. And that's and when people are starting to podcast, you really got to start. I mean, it's, it's business, you know, it's, it's, it's consumer compare. It's, 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 it's company comparison. It's really studying your opponents, opponents or competition, so to speak. It's not, you know, it's to me, it's not necessarily a competition, but it's still business though. You got to study your competition, find out where you can fill in the gap and run with it. Well, thank you. And uh, I guess this, uh, I kind of lied when I said that was my last two questions. Uh, what can we find uh, your Pancakes and Power Slams podcast? And uh, is there anything you'd like to promote before? Um, sure, sure. So uh, yeah, Pancakes and Power Slams uh, every Tuesday night. It, it starts around 1140 now uh, because my show, like I said, it used to be from 11. It started off from 11 to uh 12 30 it was a uh, it was a 90 minute and years ago probably three or four years ago it was so much content we stretched it to two hours um and so um like i said uh the first part of my show uh, is a spinoff now now that's called unscripted SK, uh, sk wrestling basically <laughs> bought that part of the, my show and i get paid to, t- to interview uh wrestlers every week uh at, at, live q a with fans it uh, makes my job easy actually uh so so yeah so my 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 unscripted shows on sk wrestling i have that's a tuesday show a monday show i have with vince russo every week post raw that's on sk wrestling i'm also uh, uh doing a couple other segments on sk wrestling so follow the sk wrestling sports kita wrestling page as far as pancakes and power slams i'm still uh, almost nine years strong a 400 and I don't even know where I'm at 453 or four episodes now straight weeks consecutive weeks I haven't missed a single week since April of what started I haven't missed a single week uh, on my show April of 2012 um, so I, I've had a couple fill-ins but out of all that time I think I've missed probably five shows in nearly nine years so uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> that's how dedicated I am to you all. <laughs> so uh, type in pancakes and power slams. If you Google pancakes and power slams, my Facebook will come up. Go ahead and like the Facebook page. My YouTube will come up. Subscribe to that. And uh, I don't think I don't think I'm confident that you won't be disappointed. I I, I can say that you uh, to the viewer that uh, to anyone watching this, you won't be disappointed. It's 11:40 Eastern Standard Time for anyone. Uh, so it's a really good show. Thank you for coming on and thank you for letting me interview you. My pleasure. And take care. You too. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, make sure you like this video and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more episodes like this and more content. Goodbye.